for people of a certain age. The summer nights of 1969 were nights of profound wonder. If you happened to be, say, 10 years old, staring into the heavens on those sweet, warm evenings, suddenly brought a flood of possibilities. For main engine start, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, zero, press Americans were heading to the moon. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. <laughs> Suddenly, the night sky would never be the same again. A half century later, when you crane your neck and squint your eyes, you can still tear up and dream about that miracle journey of exploration. In a simple Kansas warehouse, those dreams are being rekindled and space history is being saved. It's an important for people to see what it took for us to put man on the moon. The very tools that got us to the moon are being brought back to life. These are the historic mission control consoles from Building 30 down in Houston. Um, if anybody has seen the movie Apollo 13 and you see the room that the film takes place in, these are the actual consoles from that room. Here in Hutchinson, Kansas, just outside Wichita, a unique team of engineers and craftsmen is rebuilding the control room that sent Apollo to the moon. We are helping Houston Johnson Space Center restore them back to the Apollo era. And they have sat unattended to um, since the mid-90s. Imagine all the life and death decisions that were made behind these controls. It was through the radios on these desks we heard the scratchy voice of Neil Armstrong as he stepped onto the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And piped through these consoles months later, we heard those ominous five words from Apollo 13. All right, here's the way out of Just down the way, flight director Gene Kranz rallied the team to save the crew with his stirring mantra, Failure is not an option. The cheering in mission control as the parachutes opened marked the second greatest day in space history. This is the famous flight director console. This would have been um, Gene Kranz's console that you'd have seen in the Apollo 13 movie. It's pretty incredible that this is his console. For space geeks, this is practically an altar. Soon, its monitors will flash back to life, and lights will flicker on like the old heady days of the moon missions. I remember this, yeah, this is all uh, history in my, my era. <laughs> Don Ike was just a nine-year-old kid during the Apollo 11 flight. Now, he's preserving a major remnant of that historic mission. This stuff has to be around a, a long, long time after we're gone, and we hope we can do, do our best to help with that. This group, called SpaceWorks, is legendary for refurbishing historic space artifacts. It's part of the Kansas Cosmosphere, an extraordinary air and space museum in Hutchinson, Kansas. When NASA or the Smithsonian needs a Mercury, a Gemini, an Apollo capsule, or other space artifact restored and cleaned up, it's a simple decision. Send it to Kansas. It's incredibly important to save and preserve history. Jim Remar runs the Cosmosphere. Kansas has such a rich history of supporting aviation. Wichita, obviously the air capital of the world. Several aircraft builders are based in eastern Kansas. Parts for Boeing and Airbus jets are still crafted in the region. And during World War II, giant assembly lines hummed 24 hours a day to build the legendary B-29 in Wichita. So Kansas and flight have always gone hand in hand. But where did the space connection come from? How did a world-class space museum end up in the middle of the Great Plains? The most frequently asked question is why Kansas? 
The answer lies 650 feet underground. Since the 1920s, the Carey family had been mining and pulling out tons and tons of salt from below Hutchinson. It's still chugging along today. But in the 1960s, Patty Carey, always a lover of science, grew focused on another passion born of the dark night skies on the Kansas Plains, looking up to the stars. So in 1962, she set up a tiny planetarium at the state fair. It was a big hit. She had a, a love of the stars and wanted to share that. By the 1970s, that evolved into the concept of a science and space museum. With the space race winding down, the timing was perfect. NASA was looking to unload all of those artifacts in the late 70s. We were a facility that they could be brought to and stored at. At the end of the Apollo Soyuz, there were literally hundreds of warehouses across the United States. Warehouses full of space artifacts no museum had room for. Both Smithsonian and NASA then signed title of probably 4,000 artifacts over to the Cosmosphere. So almost overnight, they gained a collection of U.S. space artifacts. Today, that bounty is on full display and tells the story of the space race from the very beginning, when the V-2 rockets rained death and destruction on England in World War II. An actual V-2 has been restored by Spaceworks. As the years passed, more and more pieces of space history found their way to Kansas. And the museum added a massive collection of Soviet space artifacts, the largest collection outside Moscow. So the Cosmosphere tells the story of the space race from both sides. It was the crews at Spaceworks that cleaned up Liberty Bell 7. 40 years after the Mercury space capsule sank to the bottom of the Atlantic. And what they found aboard the craft is mind boggling. They restored the Apollo 13 capsule, turning into detectives to find all the original parts. Today, even astronauts come here to marvel at the old capsule and remember their marching orders. Failure is not an option and they brought the rebuilt space consoles back here to Houston. Through the doors, up the freight elevator, and down the last long hallway. This is a journey back to the cathedral. Up wooden ramps, onto the old risers. Mission control slowly fills up again. The monitors flicker again. We've been looking at these things for so long, and to see them all here gathered together is really, really fantastic. With these consoles, they were used for shuttles, so when Cosmosphere took them away and, and had to deal with them, they're, they're primarily dealing with a lot of shuttle components. Uh, we had to find some Apollo components to put back in. The lights flash on. And it really looks original and, and uh, brings back a lot of memories. I mean, it, it looks fantastic. The idea is when people walk back in that door into the viewing room, we want them to feel like they have stepped back in time. Little touches of the 1960s will accent this room. From where it seems the whole world watched that flight to the moon. This is how you save history. And back in Kansas, they tackle a half century old mystery of the rockets of Apollo 11. How NASA, Spaceworks, and Amazon's Jeff Bezos made a remarkable discovery among all this twisted debris. It's all here. You'll see the historic hardware of spaceflight. And in the curious eyes of a new generation, you will see old dreams rekindled. A half century later, summer nights still have a certain power over us all. Dreams kept alive out here on the Kansas Plains, where they are saving history, saving the early days of man's journey into space.